today i am going to explain you about the photochemistry of the carbonyl compounds as we all know there are many type of the photochemical reactions what are photochemical reactions the reactions which takes place in the presence of the light are called as the photochemical reactions they can be classified into various categories such as photolysis they can be oxidation type of reactions they can be reduction type of the reactions they can be our isomerization type of the reactions so today we are basically concerned with the photolysis of the carbonyl compound as we all know the main functional group for the carbonyl is c double bond o so the reactions in the carbonyl compounds are basically studied into two headings that is norish type 1 and norish type 2 norish uh, reported these reactions in the year 1937 so we will see the details of norish 1 and norish 2 in this video so let me discuss first what are the electronic transitions taking place in the carbonyl compounds when they absorbs the light radiations of 230 to 330 nanometers basically if we see the structure of a carbonyl group there is a one sigma and one pi bond in c double bond o group so this sigma bond is made up of sigma electrons and the pi bond is made up of pi electrons and the oxygen has a lone pair of electrons two lone pairs of electrons are there so we can say that in a carbonyl group there are sigma pi and n types of electrons are present so when the light falls on this molecule they undergo the excitation or electronic transitions takes place so what are the electronic transitions when an electron absorbs the radiations and it jumps from the ground state to the excited state so here we can see that in the carbonyl group there will be sigma type electron pi type electron and n type electron and means non bonding so the possibilities are sigma to sigma star transition as we already know sigma to sigma star transitions then pi to sigma star transitions then n to pi star transition pi to pi star transitions and n to sigma star transitions can takes place but as we all know the energy requirements for every transition is different so the carbonyl compounds undergo two types of transition mostly n to pi star transition and pi to pi star transitions in the when they absorb the radiations of 230 to 330 nanometers the following transitions takes place in the carbonyl compound now let us see the phenomena of the process of norish type 1 and norish type 2 in the detail so in the norish type 1 is also known as alpha cleavage here we can see that the aldehyde and the ketone absorbs the light in the region of 230 to 330 nanometers and they undergo n2 pi star transitions and when they undergo n2 pi star transitions the following they initiate the primary reactions and the final product is formed by the secondary process of the reaction so let us see what are the norish type first reaction or the alpha cleavage so when the cleavage of carbon carbon alpha when the cleavage of carbon carbon bond alpha to the carbonyl group takes place is called the norish type first reaction or the alpha cleavage so let us see this with the example so suppose this is any carbonyl compound so the carbon 
next to the carbonyl group this is the carbonyl group here so the carbon next to the carbonyl carbon is the alpha carbon atom so if this bond gets cleavage so such type of the cleavage is termed as alpha cleavage and in any carbonyl compounds if alpha cleavage is taking place this phenomena is known as your norish type first reactions once again when the cleavage of carbon carbon bond alpha to the carbonyl group takes place is called norish type first reactions or alpha cleavage the aldehyde and ketone undergo the following changes so first we have taken the carbonyl compound and when the light radiations fall on this compound it undergo the homolysis of the carbon carbon bond at the alpha position so as a result of the light absorption this ketone will get fragment uh, this ketone will get homolysis uh, into two products first is a formation of acyl free radical and other is also a free radical intermediate rch2 single bond ch2 and we can see that a bond is made up of two electron so one electron will move to this carbonyl carbon and other electron will move on the other part so now the what is the formation of the two free radicals will takes place in the homolysis of the carbon carbon bond and this can undergo following three process first is the disproportionation to give the ketin second is the intermolecular hydrogen abstraction by the acyl radical and third is the decarbonylation followed by the disproportionation or the dimerization so let us see the first disproportionation to give the ketin generally when we are taking the acyl free radical and the other free radical part they can undergo to the formation of a ketin and an alkane how it is possible let us see now we can say that this r ch2 single bond ch2 and this is the carbonyl carbon so this carbonyl carbon will uh, with this group and the one of the hydrogen is abstracted from the acyl free radical and it will move to the this carbon and it will form a ch3 here so we will have the product as a ketin and the alkane so first step was a disproportionation to give the ketin so as a result of this acyl radical and the free radical and particle will form one ketin and one alkane i hope it's clear second it's the intermolecular hydrogen atom abstractions by the acyl radical we all know what is the meaning of intermolecular means when one atom is taken from another molecule means one hydrogen is abstracted from this free radical fragment and what it will lead to the formation of an alkene here as one hydrogen will be removed from the this carbon atom so this will form an alkene r ch double bond ch2 so it will get attached to the carbonyl carbon and it will form our cho group means the formation of conversion of an aldehyde group to sorry ketone group to the aldehyde group means in the second step that is a intermolecular hydrogen abstraction hydrogen abstraction by the acyl radical will result in the formation of an aldehyde and an alkene now let us see the third step that is the decarbonylation followed by the disproportionation or the dimerization now decarbonylation carbonyl group will be eliminated here decarbonylation means one of the carbonyl group is eliminated here and then the free radicals formed will undergo the disproportionation or either it can undergo the dimerization so now let us see this is our acyl free radical from the first step itself acyl free radical is formed now this acyl free radical will undergo the decarbonylation first we have to remove the carbonyl group from the free radical part so we will have r ch2 ch2 and this free radical will be transferred to the carbon atom and now the carbonyl group is eliminated 
now this free radical will uh, if we will take two molecules two molecules will be formed so it will undergo the disproportionation and the dimerization what is the result of disproportionation let us see it will get when we will take two molecule rch2 ch2 free radical ch2 ch2 so if these two free radicals are taken so one alkene will be formed and one alkane will be formed means simple one of the hydrogen is abstracted from here and it is transferred to the second free radical molecule so it will uh, have the valency satisfied and it will form one alkene rch2 ch3 and so one of the hydrogen is lost from here so it will result in the formation of a alkene so this is the disproportionation then what will be the in the dimerization so when these two free radical fragments dimerizes it's very simple both their electrons will move together and they will form a one sigma bond so the, it results in the dimerization of the two free radical part so now let us see from the beginning first uh, when the uh, we talk about the norish type first reactions norish type first reactions are those reaction where the cleavage at the alpha carbon and the carbonyl bond takes place means the carbon between the carbonyl group and the alpha carbon takes place and as a result of this cleavage this uh, it results in the formation of the acyl free radical and a, a small free radical part so they can acyl free radical can undergo the following three process first is the disproportionation to give a ketene and in the first step ketene molecule is formed and the alkanes are formed in the second step intermolecular hydrogen atom abstractions by the acyl radicals will give you one aldehyde and one alkene third step is a decarbonylation means the removal of a carbonyl group and then the free radical fragment can either undergo the disproportionation or the isomerization so by the disproportionation we will get the product in the form of alkene and alkane and in the dimerization